All right, guys, I was digging through Alex from LA's box and came up with this guy. Another one of these no-name locks. There's no marking on this lock, no stamping, nothing at all anywhere. It's a very, very old lock, and it's probably a lock I really wouldn't have paid a lot of attention to had it not been for his email promising some kind of uh, oddities. And, it again, it's hard to get excited about it. You look in there, I think you can see this is a wafer lock. So uh, kind of hard hard to get excited about wafer locks. We do have a key. Um, we're we're going to take the lock cam and take a look, but let's look at the key first. And how do we know it's a wafer lock? Well, we got cuts on both sides, so it's a double-sided opposing wafer lock. So the oddity on this key would be right there. So the way wafers work, if you push it completely in one direction, you've got to have a cut on the other side to allow that wafer to move up. So here we have it's perfect. We got a high cut, no cut. We got a high cut, no cut, and same here. But then when we get here, we got what is a partial cut. It's cut about half the depth of that one, and there's no accommodation here on the top, other than a lot of a lot of wear. I mean, it is a homemade lock. I get it, or a homemade key. So you can't argue with success, regardless of whether those cuts match up. It works perfectly. So before we jump in there with both feet, let's get the lock cam and see if we can cheat and find out what kind of oddities Alex is talking about. All right, let's take a look at this guy, see what we can see. Line up, there we go. All right. Let's try to focus on the entryway first. And you'll notice a lot of wear on this thing. I don't think any of that was, that's just from years of use. And the same on the top, look at that. So this lock has had some hard days, but I really want to look inside. Let's see what we got. There's, you can see a wafer hanging down right there at the entrance. Let's get focused on him. Again, a lot of wear on that guy, a lot of unevenness. Check it out, right in the center. So I don't know if that's from picking or what. Um, it's growing hair, so we may have to shave our way in there. A lot of corrosion. Uh, let's move up a little. All up and down the keyway, you've got that same wear. There's another wafer hanging down right there. And I think I see one right near the entrance. Let me back out the focus a little bit. Okay, that looks like one right there just barely hanging in the way. But I have to say, unless there's another one directly behind that guy, I only see two, perhaps, if you count him, three wafers to deal with here. And I would have expected at least four, perhaps as many as five, based on that key. So I got to say, other than learning that we needed to shave the inside of the lock here, I'm not sure we learned a lot. So let's go ahead and pick it. Try to pick it. Um, it is a very wide keyway, so let's see if I can find that really fat one. He ought to fit. Yep, okay. So let's, oops, maybe not. I mean, it's so worn, he just kind of rolled out of there. All right, let's put him just like that. And find a pick. A wide open keyway. I'm going to use a, you could use a 50, you could use a 75,000 width pick on, on his, all I have is a 25. So we'll go with this guy. All right, so let's start with moderate tension. I'm going to go all the way back. And I got nothing. There's nothing. I can feel that one wafer, but he's still springy. So let's turn it around. And what I'm going to do, I think I can just lever off the bottom of that super wide tensioner. And that should protect me from oversetting anything. There we go. So I just touched about wafer two where we saw that one. And if there are other wafers, they are so springy that I got nothing. Let's try the top now. Okay, I just touched probably about where that wafer was it was hanging down. And we, oh, we got nothing, and then we got to open. All right, yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure about this, guys. I think there's only, I think I only felt three wafers. That's all I felt myself, unless I bumped something without realizing it. So I guess the weirdness must be on the inside of this lock. And the reason I say that, let's jump down here. Let's get all this junk out of the way. Get him up there. And the reason I say that is... On the back here, obviously, we have two screws for the actuator, but something I've never seen before. Let me go ahead and lock them back up. It is open, by the way, but I'm going to lock them back up. 
It's also two screws here on this back plate, which I have never seen before. So perhaps there is some weirdness. Let's find out. Um, I have preset. I looked up look for the right size screwdriver so I didn't embarrass myself too much. Let's go ahead and take the actuator off first. And these have, this is not the first time they've been off. These screws are very worn. All right, we may not need to take that back plate off. That is a huge that is a huge core. I'm not sure. I don't. I can tell you for sure. Again, I do not have a large enough follower. That's really unusual. But let's do it old school way. I'm going to turn it like that so the wafers are oriented to the same axis as the key. And let's just slide this dude out, thus guaranteeing another Cutting disaster. Okay, I got nothing. It is not coming out. All right, so let's lock him back up. And let's take the back plate off. Yeah, this is... <laughs> Something's going to jump out of here. I know it. <laughs> I probably should have opened it and practiced on it before I made the video. <laughs> But usually when things jump out, it's rare I'm able to get them back together. So <laughs> it's better we learn this together. All right, let's take this back plate off. All right, so looking at the size of this guy, there's no way he can come out that small entrance way. So he's got to come out backwards of what we're used to, which means a follower really wouldn't have done us any good since that's a small diameter hole. Let's go ahead and... Um, okay, I was going to say we have to turn the key, but then the key would prevent it. But it looks like this entire thing is going to come out backwards. Oh, boy. Here we go. Make sure everything's focused so when it does shoot out, I'll at least have some evidence. All right, I'm seeing some pins over here on the side that are starting to pop out. Put my fingers so they don't launch too far. Let me flip it around here. Okay, those are all tra uh, trapped wafers, it looks like. The only jumpy part, I think, is the are these pins. You can see them right under my finger there. All right, look at that. Nice thin shell on that guy. All right, let's get a tweezer. Let me get everything lined up here so I can halfway get this back together. All right, we have a, there is a spring wound around that guy, and there's a reduced diameter pin. I think I know what's going on here. I think those reduced diameters probably press up against the wafers on the inside and keep tension on them. These are all the same length, which makes sense. You wouldn't be picking those. And now... What happens? It's got to come out so they could rekey it, right? Okay, now that is still spring loaded. I'm at a loss. That is definitely spring loaded on that side. So, what happens if I push that down and then push it out? Nothing. Man, they have to come out of there. And it has to come out of the big slot, right? Oh. All right, so there's the wafer and that little, I don't know if you can see that or not. The little spring that's built into the wafer right there is what's pushing those wafers into position. So there are other wafers in there. So what were the pins holding? What were the pins doing?
I really am at a loss here. I don't know what to do. I don't want to break anything because I don't have parts to repair it. So I'm wondering if it comes out this way. No. That way, no. Compress it. Push it out. Nope. How about if we compress that part and try to push it out? Nope. How about we pull it out that way? Nope. All right, I'm at a loss here, guys. This may not be intended to come apart. Once they clip that spring in there, that may be the end of the game. It's never intended to come back out. I don't want to pry it, I don't want to break it. It's probably a collector's item, but I think you can see how it works. The only question is, and I'm open to ideas, what in the world do those pins do? And the reason I say that, it's on the side of the key. So when we slide the key in there, It lines all the way first, but I don't really understand what those pins do. Let's put one in just for the heck of it. Okay, so when the key is out, the pin can compress all the way in. When the key is in, all the way in, if I've got that in there right, that was the bottom. All right. So if the pin is not all the way in, that pin cannot compress. When the key is all the way in correctly and the wafer is aligned, that will compress and allow it to turn and... Didn't even notice it before. There's a groove here for those pins to fit in. So if the wafers are not picked to the correct height, those pins will not allow the core to rotate because the pins are uh, extending into that groove. Kind of like a sidebar, but they're side pins. I did not even notice them. I just picked it and put pressure on it and it seemed to work. Anyway, enough weirdness. I am not gonna break this lock. Instead, I'm gonna put it back together as best I can, send it back to Alex. Anyway, guys, appreciate your time, appreciate your patience, and I will also appreciate any comments you have. If you guys have ever seen anything like this before, please put it in the comments and uh, the really good ones, if you have a history on it, I will certainly post it in the description. Thanks, guys.